Hey everyone. <clears throat> Can you hear me okay? Cool. So hey everyone, uh, I hope you're having a good uh, Maker Faire. Um, so uh, my name is Mitch. Mitch. And um, I'm a co-founder of NoiseBridge Hackerspace in San Francisco and uh, eh, probably a whole bunch of other things. But uh, today I'm here to talk about the hackerspace movement. And uh, how many people here have been to a hackerspace? Just a few. Wow, cool. So a lot of you have some incredible experiences ahead of you then. Uh, there's currently, um, you know, I, I unfortunately had my laptop stolen on the way here. So I can't show you all the pretty slides that I had, and I had to change my talk because they all reference the slides. So um, uh, bear with me with these notes. Um, but uh, anyways, there's 1,394 hackerspaces in the world now. That's uh, kind of cool because when I came to the first UK Maker Fair not all that long ago, there were just uh, a few hundred, and there were none in the UK. Uh, London Hackspace was just starting, and, um, uh, but more were popping up all the time, and they're still popping up all the time. But the thing is, 1,394 isn't enough. We need more hackerspaces. Um, the world needs hackerspaces. Hackerspaces are physical places where there's supportive community for people to explore and do what they love. All sorts of geeky realms are happening there, exploring and doing what people love in all these realms. Tech, art, craft, food, science, whatever. Whatever people are into exploring and doing what they love, this is happening at Hackerspaces. Um, it includes much of what's happening here at the Maker Fair, except it's happening all day, all night, every day, all year round. In fact, that's why I started Hackerspaces, because I wanted more of this, because it's exciting. Um, you know, and the, the internet is a great tool, but it's not a substitute for real live community, which is why we're here at the Maker Faire. Um, uh, you know, we can do so much more when we're together in person than being mediated with technology. Uh, we all benefit so much more, we can share so much more, and learn so much more, live in person, in real supportive community. And the thing is, we need community. It's deep inside of us, in our DNA. We wouldn't have survived as a species on the planet if we didn't get together in supportive community uh, to support each other in a sometimes hostile environment. And today, in our modern world, just because we don't need supportive community merely to survive, it doesn't mean that we still don't have this deep inner need. We do. It's in our DNA. It really is. We can survive without community, but we can't thrive. And one of the things we did in our community to support each other is to teach and uh, share tools that we created to make our lives better, to help us survive better. And again, just because we don't need these tools and to be able to teach and share these tools just to survive, it doesn't mean we don't have a deep inner need to share and teach and learn and to have some kind of creative output. We do. We have this deep inner need. Unfortunately, in our modern world, we have precious little community in our lives. Uh, and our education system is broken, especially in my country. Uh, and that we uh, have so many diversions to take away our time and energy into things that aren't necessarily useful and not for exploring what we love, let alone doing what we love, and taking away from our time for creative expression. Fortunately, geeks around the world have come up with a way, a fantastic model, to provide everyone with all of this. Supportive community and creative expression happen at hackerspaces um, to provide these really deep inner needs. Um, we can all get together and teach and learn and share through hacking. So what is hacking? Well, hacking means a lot of different things to different people, but I think the, the biggest uh, definition and the one that is so cool is Taking what is, whatever it is, improving upon it, 
and then sharing it. And since anything can be improved upon, anything can be hacked. We can and we do hack anything and everything. Um, from the model railroaders at MIT, uh, back before computers even existed in the early 1950s, and those are the people who coined the term hacking, to taking some military network that was designed for fighting World War III uh, and turning it into the World Wide Web, to creating crowdsource funding, citizen science, uh, citizen journalism. Uh, with all this and more, uh, we've, hackers have created this from systems that are otherwise rapidly becoming obsolete. All of this is hacking, done by hackers. And we can do so much more, and we are doing so much more, and we're improving our lives and the world in the process. We're creating the future, not, for our, not just for ourselves, but for all of humanity. So like I said, 1,394 hackerspaces is way cool, but it is not enough. We need more. We need a million hackerspaces on the planet. We want everyone to walk to a hackerspace so that anyone anywhere in the world has the opportunities that all of us have. Because it not only improves each and every one of us, but improves our communities at large and the world. You need one in your hometown. If you're lucky enough to live in a town where there is a hackerspace, go to it. Check it out. Make use of it. It's a fabulous resource. It's an incredible resource. There's so much there. You have so much to learn. There's so much that you can contribute as well if you want to. Uh, if you're lucky enough to live right here in Newcastle, there's a hackerspace right here, uh, Newcastle Makerspace. They have a booth over in uh, Area C. Um, and uh, if you live in the UK, there's uh, the UK Hackspace Foundation, and they have an area over by the uh, soldering area where I've been teaching zillions of people to solder all day, uh, yesterday and today. Go check them out. Uh, and wherever you live, you can go to hackerspaces.org to see if there's a hackerspace in your hometown. And if there is, way cool. And if there isn't, start one. That's the only way hackerspaces have started, and it's the only way hackerspaces have always started, is because people like you, you, start one. That's the only way it's happened. I co-founded NoiseBridge because I wanted uh, uh, these kind of cool conferences like maker fairs and hackers uh, conferences not to end. Of course, they always do end. But if we can have this kind of thing all day, all night, all year round in your own hometown, what could be cooler than that? So <clears throat> uh, let's see. Your hometown really does need a hackerspace, and uh, it doesn't take a lot of time or money because you're not alone in doing this. There's a world full of hackerspaces wanting to help you do it. There's the UK Hackspace Foundation here in the UK wanting to help as well, and there are people in your community, maybe you know them and maybe you don't yet, who also want to help. Um, each hackerspace is unique. Each one is unique because the people who start them are unique. The people who join them and keep them happening are unique. They're unique for these, uh, the desires and sensibilities of the group that starts them. Perfect for you and your community. Here is all you need to do. Imagine the culture that you want to be a part of, that you want to spend a lot of time in. What would that be like? Spread that word. Tell everyone you know. Tell everyone to tell everyone you know, and don't shut up about it. Keep talking about it. It will attract lots of cool people who fit in with it, which makes it stronger, which attracts more cool people, etc. It's kind of magic. It just happens. Um, then uh, pick a name. It doesn't matter what the name is, as long as it's one that you kind of like. Uh, make a website with a URL for your name. Make a logo. It doesn't have to be perfect. You'll attract some uh, people of all sorts, including graphic designers, to make it better if you're not one already. Uh, then you make stickers and hand them out to everyone. Stickers. There's lots of Noisebridge stickers here. Noisebridge. We have a logo. Um, so feel free to come and take a sticker uh, for ours. There's hackerspaces all around the UK that are represented here. Grab their stickers or get a stamp for uh, your uh, hackerspace passport if you have one or whatever. Uh, the logo goes a long way in spreading the word. You can also list yourself on hackerspaces.org, which is a networking site to uh, help people network. 
Um, and there are hackerspaces all over the world where all 1394 currently are listed. It's a wiki. You can change it. You can do whatever you want there. People get together and help one another. Email. You can ask questions. You can uh, answer questions. You can find out lots of cool information. There are people there who want to help you. Um, then a really important thing is to read the hackerspace design patterns, which is a really cool uh, tool for learning so much about any kind of community forming. And those are things that have worked and not worked so well for lots of hackerspaces through the years. And one of the patterns is meet every Tuesday. It doesn't matter what day of the week. Every, week every, every day of the week sucks because people are so busy, so just do it on Tuesday and get it over with. Uh, so meet every week, it really helps. And then when you're finally ready, you have enough energy and people are excited about it, you find a space. And then people really flock to it and get ready to grow because it'll happen. Um, get ready for your community to benefit greatly from all of this. Benefits are many and varied, but one that's really important to me is that real education happens at hackerspaces. Real education, not the kind of thing that happens in schools, especially in my countries where it's just about standardized test scores. That's not education, that's bureaucracy. Education is where people learn because they love learning, where people teach because they love teaching. This is real education and it happens at hackerspaces. No matter how much we know, we can learn something from other people. No matter how little we know, we have something we know that other people don't know, and it's fantastic to share that with others. It feels great. Try it. It's wonderful. And this happens at hackerspaces. It benefits all of us and our communities. Um, yeah, and it, all of this kind of stuff is so much easier with a supportive community than just on your own. Uh, let's see. Hackerspaces are supportive communities, as I said, where people explore and do what they love. If you explore what you love, because many of us don't even know what we love because we've been so diverted and haven't put enough time into exploring, but hackerspaces are great places for exploring. And if you find something you love and then do it, then you might find that other people love it too. It's not unlikely, because if you love something, chances are really good that others will love it too. And in a capitalist society such as ours, if people love what you do, they will pay you to do it. And if enough people pay you to do it, you can keep doing what you love, getting enough to keep doing what you love, so that you uh, uh, can keep doing what you love. You're making a living doing what you love. That is my definition of success. And what could be amazingly cooler than that? And if enough people keep paying you to do that, you'll need help and you can hire your friends. You can hire people from your hackerspace. You can hire people from the community at large if it gets big enough. This creates local economy that works perfectly for you and your community. That's pretty powerful. And all this happens very easily at hackerspaces. There's lots of ways of organizing hackerspaces. Each one is unique, like I said, perfect for you. My favorite one out of all the ones I've been to, and I've been to maybe oh, 250 in the world, is Noisebridge. But that's not surprising because I co-founded it. I'm kind of biased. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about Noisebridge, just as an example. Um, Noisebridge has it's huge and uh, diverse. We have 5,200 square feet. Uh, and it's full of all sorts of cool people all day and all night doing all sorts of cool projects and hanging out and doing wonderful things with electronics, with computers, hardware, software. We've got sewing machines. People are doing origami, uh, stuff with toothpicks that Bucky Fuller would be proud of. Uh, we've got space exploration. We've got a full kitchen and food classes and cooking classes. We've got a dark room, people doing photography, video, music. Um, uh, people making their own controllers. We've got people doing journalism, uh, people doing human language studies, uh, sociology, anthropology, anything and everything that people in our community want to come and teach and learn and share and explore. All this and more is happening at Noisebridge all the time and many other hackerspaces around the world, including ones right here in Newcastle. Uh, we are a nonprofit. Some, uh, not most, but not all are. 100% uh, of our equipment is donated, no strings attached. Um, 
lots of classes and workshops all day, all night, every day on all those subjects I mentioned before and more. We have no leaders, none. If you want to do something at Noisebridge and you don't think people will object, you just do it. That's the way things happen at Noisebridge. We call that duocracy. And lots of amazing things happen because people just do it. You don't have to ask permission. You can't ask permission because there's no one to ask permission of. You just do it and cool things happen. We run by consensus decision making, which is kind of weird, but it really works well for us. We have one and only one rule. Anyone know what it is? <laughs> That's rule number two, but rule number three is there's only one rule. But uh, rule number one and only one rule is be excellent to each other. <laughs> Everything else follows from there. It's a little hokey, but it works great. And we've gotten, we just uh, had our five year anniversary party for um, uh, our space. We've been having Tuesday meetings since summer of 2007. This stuff works great for us and it works for other people too. Everything at Noisebridge is free. And um, uh, let's see if I can read my scrawl. Yeah, so we're financially supported by uh, membership dues and donations entirely. And our budget is uh, about 60,000 uh, a year. And uh, that's some real money, but we do so much with that, uh, much more than many other nonprofits. You don't have to be a member of Noisebridge to do anything, though. Since it runs itself, we get enough membership dues and donations. It's open to the whole community, uh, and anyone in the world is always welcome to come at Noisebridge. You don't have to be a member at Noisebridge to take classes. You don't have to be a member of Noisebridge to use our tools for free. You don't have to be a member to teach classes. You don't even have to be a member of Noisebridge to have a key. If anyone thinks they're going to visit San Francisco at any time in the future, I have a bunch of keys. So feel free to grab a key. This is one of many ways we keep Noisebridge full of incredibly cool people so that it's always safe and wonderful for everybody. So F I'm totally serious. These work. They will always work no matter what kind of door entry system we come up with. The key will let you into Noisebridge. You are always welcome. Uh, so your space that you create or go to may be similar or way different. Because each one is perfect for your sensibilities uh, and your desires. So Noisebridge is just one example of many. There's a lot of them listed, and there's a lot of people to talk to. Uh, ask me, ask any of the people going around with hackerspace uh, t-shirts or pins. And um, you know, the world is looking to us because we've created something that really works with real community of something there's so little of in our world. Uh, so thank you for whatever way you are contributing in your own unique geeky ways. And uh, yeah, go out there and hack and do cool things. <clears throat> so I got time for questions. Uh, for a little bit. If anyone has any questions, you can ask me now or later or email me. Uh, my email address there, I'm always open for people to contact me for any reason. I, I love helping people any way I can. So any questions? Yeah. What cool stuff that uh, people at Noisebridge produce? Oh, man. Uh, uh, there's so many things I don't know what to say first. So. Uh, um, there's this one robot which I think is incredibly cool. It started off as an electric wheelchair that was broken, that was donated. Some people made the wheelchair work. Some other people hooked a computer to it so it could be computer controlled instead of joystick controlled. And then someone else hooked um, a phone to it so it could be controlled through your phone. Someone else hooked a brain interface to it so you can control it with your brain waves. Uh, that one's fun. There's a video on our website of someone hysterically screaming in laughter out of nervousness because they're on the wheelchair and someone else has their brainwaves controlling it. <laughs> it's not three laws compliant and it's 350 pounds, so uh, it's kind of scary, but it's really fun. Um, yeah, the person who did the brainwave thing, he does these cool uh, brainwave controlled helicopters. Uh, there's a company that started out of Noisebridge that makes 
really incredibly cool, high quality 3D printers uh, that are all open source. Everything at NoiseBridge pretty much is open source. There are people doing um, their own computer games. There's a guy who's making a living doing LED, uh, LED lighting. Uh, so he just got hired by a, a new club in town. He's got these LED strips hanging down so, and in 3D. So he's got these uh, low-res 3D displays hanging out all over in the, in the club. It's quite trippy. Um, yeah, and uh, we have people growing their own mushrooms. Uh, some people have done <laughs> incredibly cool um, photography. Uh, we have a dark room, and so we also have sewing machines, and some people combine the two, and they're sewing uh, negatives and prints together. Uh, you know, it just, these kind of things happen when you have sewing over here and soldering over there and a kitchen over there. Suddenly you have people sewing LEDs into skirts or shirts, and then you have LEDs in cake frosting. And <laughs> so uh, all these things and more. Uh, it's limited by only imagination, and imagination is limitless. Any other questions? Cool, well, if you have any questions of anything, how to start one, how to do something, oh, question. Administration, okay, you don't have bosses, but you have funds, and you have machines which need maintenance, that sort of thing. How is this done? Well, at NoiseBridge, um, things are done because people do it. At other hacker spaces, people are uh, volunteer to, uh, uh, like, kind of be assigned to a particular tool. Uh, other places, they um, have paid staff that take care of things. Uh, we've never really had problems with that. Uh, some of our stuff is a bit specialized, so they have some downtime before someone who knows how to fix them comes along and fixes them if they need maintenance. Uh, but other things, uh, there are enough people all the time there, because we have hundreds and hundreds of people who go through there a week, and a lot of people that are there almost every day, and people love these tools, they love the space, they love the community, so they take care of it. And we all look out for each other. And, and you can manage it without any formal administration Quite well, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but like I said, different hackerspaces are different. Uh, that's our model. You know, hacker, uh, NoiseBridge was started by a bunch of anarchist, hippie, punk weirdos. Me being one of them. So we have a kind of anarchist, hippie, punk, weirdo kind of a, a culture. Uh, other ones are much more organized because some people really want to have more rules so they know what's expected of them. Um, other ones have benevolent dictators because it's just easier. <laughs> so you know, it doesn't matter. There's no right and wrong way. The only wrong way is one that doesn't work for you. Well, if it doesn't work, period, it doesn't work for you. So, yeah, yeah. How do you deal with the basic safety issues when you've got all these people coming in and out? It doesn't sound like you have a great deal of uh, knowledge of who's going where, doing what. How do you make sure that someone doesn't suddenly decide, oh, I'll play with this machine today and drill a hole in their head? Well, there's no way to ensure that no one drills a hole in their head or does something else stupid, because you can't legislate people being smart. But um, uh, we're always looking out for each other. So uh, our one rule is applied to this as well. So it's not excellent to go use a machine that you don't know how to use, endangering yourself or others or the machine. So when someone walks in the machine shop and they turn on the circular saw and they're kind of scratching their head, someone will go, hey, you want some help with that? Um, so uh, that's worked really well for, for us. Uh, we've never had stains of blood on the circular saw that I'm aware of. Um, so, uh, yeah, and out of all of the years of people doing hackerspaces, I'm not aware of anyone getting permanently damaged. Uh, we really do need to look out for each other, whether there are rules or not about all of this. Um, other hackerspaces are much more organized around all of that. You must get certified on a tool, and some of them go as far as having um, door access RFID cards, and that lets you in the building if you're a member, and they'll let you turn on a tool if you're certified for it. There's a lot of different ways people have worked it out. In NoiseBridge, we have a very large community of people who look out for each other and are uh, always asking to be sure people are um, comfortable using the tools. Any other questions? Yeah. Can I just suggest, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we, we do have another talk. Ah, we're running out of time. So. Yeah, so 
ask me over there. Yeah, stickers and keys and uh, <laughs> thanks everyone.